It's Friday, February 5th, 2011, and you're watching This Week in Linux News. Well, it's official. A day that we knew was coming for a very long time has come to pass this week. We've officially run out of IPv4 IP addresses. Now, that's not to say they've all been used up. They have just all been allocated to one provider or another. So very, very soon, we're going to be completely out of addresses. Now, what does this mean for you and me, the people that are already connected to the internet, already have IPv4 addresses? Not a whole lot. As long as you don't lose that address, you shouldn't have any issues. But after those final addresses have been allocated, the people that try to connect after that point are going to be sort of out of luck. So what do we do about it? At this point, providers have to start providing IPv6 addresses, which instead of allowing for 4 billion addresses like IPv4 does, IPv6 allows for, if I remember correctly, 340 trillion 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 addresses, which I think will be enough for us for the foreseeable future if we do get to the point where there are 340 trillion 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 computers on the internet in the entire world and I guess other universe, I don't know. If we get to that point, we got something else wrong. <laughs> to go along with that idea, June 8th, 2011 is officially World IPv6 Day, where as many internet-based organizations as possible will be putting as many of their online services on IPv6 as they possibly can. Google, of course, is going to be participating as much as possible. They've been planning for this for a very long time. But like I said, hopefully ISPs will start to adopt IPv6 and we can move in that direction over the next few months, maybe the next few years. All right, let's talk about some distro releases and milestones this week. Foresight Linux version 2.5 Alpha 2 came out right after I made the review of Alpha 1. It's mainly just got some bug fixes in it, but it is a step toward a major release. Remember, it is a rolling release distro, so all you have to do is go into the terminal and type in sudo connery update all, and you will update to the absolute newest version of Foresight at any time. In addition, Chakra GNU Linux 0.3.2 released this week. Mandriva Linux put out a technical preview of their 2011 version, which is actually pushing back their entire release schedule, so the final release of Mandriva 2011 should be in June. This is just a pre-pre-alpha, really unstable, because they are moving to RPM version 5. Bodhi Linux version 0.1.5, which is their release candidate for their first major release, is now available. Archbang version 2011.02 is now available as well. As you know, that's a rolling release distro too, so it's mainly just a respin. Of course, Ubuntu 11.04's Alpha 2 is now available. I made a video talking about that just a couple of days ago. If you'd like to see that, I will have a little box over here that you can click on and a link in the source code below. Now with this new alpha version, you're also going to have Xubuntu or Zubuntu, however you want to pronounce it, Edge Ubuntu, Ubuntu Studio, Kubuntu, but not Lubuntu yet. They're having some issues getting the ISO created, but it should be available within the next week. And to be quite honest, quite possibly the biggest release of this week is Debian 6 released tonight, just a couple of hours ago. This is the first major release of Debian in several years, and it does have some updated software, although compared to most major modern distros, it is sort of behind, but that is part of the point of Debian stable, is that it is stable software. All right, enough of distro releases, let's go ahead and move on. A GNOME Shell Live CD is now available. You can get it in a Live CD or USB for 32 or 64 bit. So if you're itching to try out GNOME Shell, but you don't want to install it on your live system, just like me, you can go ahead and download this disk or this USB image and try it out in any machine you want to. Speaking of GNOME 3, Pharonix posted an article this week with some interesting information that I didn't realize. If you close a laptop that's running GNOME 3, this newer version, they've removed the controls that allow you to tell your system what to do when you close the laptop lid. Before, with any version of GNOME, you could tell it, when you close the lid, what do you want to do? I want to blank the screen, I want to shut down or hibernate or suspend. Well, with this new version, you're not going to get that option. You're going to get the option to suspend, and that's it. Now this does pose some significant problems for a lot of people because a lot of people's laptops don't like to suspend. In addition, a lot of people prefer to keep their laptop running when you close it. For example, if you're downloading files or if you've got a connection to a social media network or to a IRC service or anything like that and you don't want to lose that connection, you want to just be able to close your laptop to walk away for a few minutes sometimes. Hopefully the GNOME developers will rethink this decision. We'll see what happens in the coming months. 
Keeping up the pace they've been going at for months now, Google released Chrome version 9 this week. With this release, they've added support for WebGL, which is a web wrapper for OpenGL ES, so you can have 3D stuff in the browser, which is awesome. They've also added in what's called Chrome Instance. So when you're typing into the search bar at the top now, it performs just like Google's Instant Search. I'm not sure how I'm going to like the new Instant Search built into the URL bar. Where I'm on Arch Linux, I'm actually installing Chromium 9 right now, so I'll let you know maybe in a vlog entry how I like it. Now let's move on to something that's made a lot of people kind of angry. As you may or may not remember, when the Humble Indie Bundle version 1 came out, a bunch of the games in it were open sourced at the end. Lugaroo was one of those games. Well, the developers at Wolfire Games have checked the Mac App Store and found a counterfeit version of Lugaroo in there. The developer and maintainer of the game, a company called iCoder, thinks that they're not in the wrong by doing this because they claim that they've been given permission from Wolfire to take the game and sell it and do basically whatever they want to with it. Wolfire's blog post and the company Wolfire themselves basically say, no, we didn't say that you could do that. It's GPL, you have to provide the source code, you can sell it, but again, you have to provide the source code. Any of the original artwork was not available for resale. So we should see some interesting things shaking up with that in the next couple of days, hopefully. Now let's sort of bridge the gap between the Linux and the Android stuff. NVIDIA may or may not have leaked an image that shows the roadmap that they've got planned for the Tegra processors that are being used in a lot of Android phones. As you probably know, the Tegra 2 is now available. That's a dual-core processor that's being used in a lot of new smartphones and tablets. However, it looks like they're working on a 3D chip that will allow 3D displays to be powered by the Tegra, as well as a quad-core chip that will be used in smartphones possibly by the end of this year. Now, I don't know about you, but the idea of a quad-core processor in a phone is amazing to me. To be honest, if this is true, if this roadmap is accurate, I wouldn't expect to see anything before CES next year, but I would kind of hope for it. As you guys probably know, I did just sign a contract with Verizon for two years for my new smartphone, so I'm kind of stuck one way or another, but if they released a quad-core phone, I might figure out a way to go ahead and upgrade. All right, and now onto the Android news. According to Google, and according to the data released up to February 2nd, 2011, the previous two weeks, more than 90% of Android-based devices are now running Android version 2.1 or higher. You know, we've mentioned several times in the past, the numbers are growing and growing. Basically, the 1.5 and 1.6 versions are slowly being phased out. And it's wonderful to see them moving these devices up to newer and newer versions. I just kind of wish that 90% number was more on the 2.2 to 2.3 side of things. Hopefully, we'll see more devices getting 2.3 in the very near future. And speaking of devices getting 2.3, there are some hints going around that Droid X might be getting 2.3 in the very near future. I don't have any solid information on that, so... Uh, just keep our fingers crossed, I suppose. Now moving things along, Google had an event on the 2nd, which was earlier this week, where they talked all about Honeycomb, all of the new features, and even a new market. Now it's not entirely a new market. Basically, they took the existing Android market and they put it on the web. If you go to market.android.com, you can take a look at the full Android marketplace. You can even push apps to your device from the website. The other really cool thing they changed about the market is they added the ability to do in-app billing. This is something that's been available on iOS, on the, the Apple marketplace for quite a while now, but it's nice to finally see it coming over to the Android side of things. Now at the rest of the Google event, they demoed a lot of things, including the Motorola Zoom, which is supposed to be releasing on February 17th. I say February 17th because there is a leaked image from Best Buy that's supposed to be getting it on that day. But they showed off Google Talk using the front-facing camera, they showed off a brand new CNN app, they showed off a bunch of new things. If you'd like to see the full video, it's about 53 or 55 minutes. They've got it posted on their channel. I'll go ahead and have a link to it in the source code. All right, and some kind of cool, kind of useful news. A while back, Google created a service called Google Cloud Print, where basically you could take a Chrome OS-based device and print to any printer on a system that's running the Cloud Print service. Well, apparently Google has decided to expand that service, so now it's supposed to be working on Android and iPhone as well. I will definitely be taking a look at it to see if it works on my phone. So do you think that's going to be useful for you? Do you want the ability to print from your phone? I could see it being really useful for some of the larger tablets that a lot of people might use as a word processor. Don't know about doing it from a phone, although I could see it being useful for something like Groupon. By the way, if you have not tried out Groupon yet, it is a wonderful site, a wonderful app. Very, very useful with great deals. All right, and we're down to the last couple of stories here. Netflix, a couple of months ago, mentioned that they were planning on bringing their full application with streaming video to Android. From a post over at droidlife.com, they mentioned talking to someone at CES about it, 
and they claim that they're going to be coming to Qualcomm-based devices first, which means those of us with the TI OMAP processor devices are not going to be getting Netflix anytime soon. However, the fact they're still making progress toward getting it to work on Android is a big plus, a big thumbs up from me. And the last thing I'd like to talk about today is something that I think is kinda cool. Someone managed to get Honeycomb, the completely unreleased tablet OS for Android, running on the Nook Color. Now, according to the post, not everything is quite perfect yet. They had some issues getting sound to work, but they finally did get that working. Wireless works and a bunch of other things. It's still, like I said, not complete. The performance is not wonderful. And I think as a part of it, you can even overclock the processor and they've rooted it and a bunch of other things. There are videos of it running, so I will definitely have links to all of that in the source code below. But that's all I've got for you right now. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in a couple of days.